every gamer wants their recordings to look perfect and clear. Problem is, the settings are confusing as heck. So let me show you the exact OBS Studio settings to make your recordings look perfect. First, we'll go into OBS Studio, and then we'll go to the bottom right corner where it says settings. And then we're going to skip over the general and skip over appearance and skip over stream because we don't need that. We're going to go directly to the output tab. Once you're on the output tab, we're going to change the output mode from simple to advanced, and that's going to give us more settings to access. Then we're going to change the streaming tab right here to the recording tab. And this is where the meat and potatoes really are going to hide. Now, I know this looks a little intimidating, but I'm going to explain it that anyone can understand, even your mom. First thing we got to worry about is the recording path. This is where all of your recordings are going to save on your computer. So you can hit the browse button and choose a location that you want all of your recordings to go to. I will say you're going to want to pick an SSD or some kind of good solid state drive because I've tried recording directly on a crappy hard drive before and it basically stuttered the recordings and it was bad. So pick a nice solid state drive to record this to. And then if you want, you can transfer it over later. And then for the recording format, we're actually going to pick MKV. And you might be thinking, why the heck are we not using something like MP4? Well, MKV actually has a really useful feature, whereas if your recording gets stuttered or your power goes out or for whatever reason, it just like loses the progress, then your recording file won't actually be corrupted. You're actually going to keep all of the recording that you had before that incident happened. Unlike if you're using like MP4, because that whole file is going to be MIA. And the neat thing is, is if we actually go directly to the advanced tab here, we can scroll down to where it says recording, and then we're gonna choose automatically remux to MP4. So what this will do after you enable it is when you end your recording, it's automatically gonna give you the MKV file, which you can delete, and then it's gonna automatically give you the MP4 file as well. So that way you can safely record in MP4 without possibly losing your footage if the power goes out or some stupid thing happens. So it's actually really helpful, so highly recommend that. But let's go back to the output tab, and we're gonna move on to the video encoder. A lot of people get confused on this, but really there's only two options options. You have NVIDIA NVEC, which is people that have NVIDIA cards like myself. So you'll be using the NVIDIA NVEC H264. But if you're an AMD user, you're just going to pick the AMD equivalent in your video encoder. It's that simple. And then if you don't have either of those options, then chances are your recordings are going to look pretty bad because you don't have a proper graphics card. And then you'll have to use X264, which is going to eat up a lot of your CPU and your recordings are going to look really rough. So I would highly recommend against using X264 unless you absolutely have to. Just know you're probably going to run into issues. The audio encoder, we're going to use FF MPEG, fun to say. The audio track, this is actually really important and very helpful, but it is a little complex. So I'm going to save this for the very end of the video. So stick around to make sure that you use this because it's actually a super helpful feature in recordings. But there's some other stuff we got to tackle before we do that. So we're actually going to scroll down to where it says encoder settings. And if you remember the streaming tab, we use CBR on here. We're actually going to use CQP for the encoder rate control because it's going to be better for our recordings. And then for the CQ level, you can pick anything between 16 to 20. I I prefer 17 it's right in the middle but if you're experiencing issues you can lower it to 16 or if you want to go higher then you can go all the way up to 20 but that might be a little overkill and then the keyframe interval i have it at two you could also have it at zero you might see both in other videos but either is really fine the preset can be anywhere between p5 and p7 if you got a really good computer i'd use p7 if you got a really crap computer i'd pick p5 if you got somewhere between p6 you can also switch this up as you go in case you run into any issues just like the cq level and the keyframe interval if you need to then for the tuning multipass profile, all the rest of the stuff, you can just copy high quality, two passes high, cycle visual tuning zero and two. It's really that simple. And then you can hit apply and we'll move on to the audio tab at the very top, not the one on the left, but at the top, change all these bad boys to 320 to give you the best audio quality for all of them. And then we're going to move to the actual audio quality. But before we do that, quickly hit OK. If you're wondering why I got the starting soon screen, it's actually in my streamer starter pack, which is linked in the description down below. So you feel free to check that out. We'll actually go back to the settings in the bottom right corner. Then we'll go to the audio tab on the left. Make sure that you have your desktop audio selected. So that's going to be your headphones or your speakers speakers that your audio is coming out of for everything. And then pick your microphone from the first list here. I'm using the Rode Pod mic USB right there. Love this mic. Also linked in the description below. Simply hit apply. Make sure that goes in there. Then we'll go to the video tab and you're going to change your base canvas resolution to whatever game you're playing. I game at 1080p and my monitor is 1080p. So my base canvas resolution is 1080. And then for the output, you're going to want to change it to whatever you're going to record at. I want to record at 1080p 60 frames per second. And since these two numbers match here, we don't need a downscale filter. But if yours do not match, 
you're going to change this downscale filter to lands coast because it's going to give you the best quality and then the common fps value we're going to pick 60 because i'm recording in 1080p 60 fps moving on to the next step we got hotkeys in case you want to use any of these like start stop recording with if you have an extra key on your keyboard or you got a stream deck or something like that but you can feel free to explore these on your own and also make sure to drop a like on this video if it's been helpful so far so other streamers can find this video so we can now hit okay and these will give you beautiful settings for your recordings but the last thing i wanted to touch on if we go to the settings in the bottom right corner click that go back to output recording and then the audio tracks you can actually split your audio tracks so you can split your game audio and your mic audio so when you bring it into your video editor after you can actually have more control over both but i have an entire video covering that entire process which is right here to the side of me so give that one a watch my name is cody and i will see you in the next one